hearing. Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. I hope everybody's doing well today. There's a lot of things going on this weekend, so I'm sure everybody's making their plans. A great weekend to be outside. We are going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that is family heritage. You know, I know a lot of you people know that I'm Italian, and my mom is first generation. I mean, I'm first generation. She was born in Italy. My father is first generation, so I'm second generation with him. But with that, I'm going to have Debbie start off. She's got some great stuff to talk about with this. Well, hey, Lord, thanks so much. I'm excited. You know what? I'm excited for a couple of things. I'm, not, I mean, I'm sad that school's going to start real soon, you yeah. know, what? And for, for the kids, okay? And maybe not for us, okay? But it is a big weekend with a lot of cool, fun things happening. And a lot of things, actually, how apropos this is related to heritage, okay? So there's the Italian Fest going on. There's, you know, the one in the city, the one out in the, out in the burbs. And then, you know, a couple weekends ago, which we had talked about, we weren't able to go. My, some of my heritage, Polish, there was a Polish Fest in indiana that would have been a riot to go to and so anyways but you know we're going to encourage everybody to as you hear about what we're going to talk about today you know find out about some of these things that are going on go go find go to them it's fun you know there's going to be some ethnic foods and you know you'll find different cultural like traditions and things like that so anyways we're going to talk a little bit about like okay obviously Lori and i are older and we have children and we have grandchildren you know we're going to encourage you as if you are a parent or or whoever whoever you are dig deep and learn about your family heritage and start to teach it to your kids or your family okay so if you don't have a like kids learn on your own so you could share it get your siblings together if you have any find out the things that are going on and what you had happen in your family and where you are Lori tells you you know she's first generation here my husband's father was born in Italy okay so he's you know first generation I would be, let's see, my mom was here, my in, my my grandparents came from Poland, so I'd be what, second generation, right? Yeah, so it's kind of cool when you look at all this stuff, you know, and I really highly encourage you guys that with the internet that you can find things out so easy, you know, that's how Lori and I have been doing all this stuff, you know, so start, like, honestly, start with your grandparents. Okay, start, we'll start with the parents, but start with the grandparents. So whether you have a family or not, there's somebody that you got here somehow, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Yeah. So if you don't have children yet or never had children or whatever, you still have some background. And, you know, I, we laugh because I always say, okay, I'm half Polish, half Bohemian, but I really don't know. And this is something that we, Lori and I are having some deep conversations about this recently, because mainly because of all the fuss that are coming up, because, you know, we got our, we'll talk about it, Lori, I'll, I'll, I'll let you promote them, because it's so fun about all our bands that we know where they're playing this weekend, and we're torn by where we're going, when we're going, but, I mean, we started to think that about like, okay, you know, that's really cool because some of those places are going to have those foods and everything. And then we started talking a little bit more about like how we know and how we, you know, and I really don't know everything, you know? And so I did start with a few things looking into it and we'll get into that in a second. But anyways, Laura, what do you got to say about, you know, like starting with these earlier generations and kind of, you know, well, getting, you know, you know, what it is, is, you know, the Italians came here, you know, uh, they came here years and years ago by the boat. In fact, my mom even came by a boat. Yeah. She married my dad. But, you know, they came to this country to find work and they would send their money home to their families. Yeah. I have an interesting story. This is amazing. I had a great grandfather that married my great grandmother she was okay. actually born in italy came here when she was three and then she went back to italy okay my great grandfather came back to the united states he had they had all their kids in italy and my great grandmother he had a whole nother family here and he didn't go back till 40 years later when he was retiring so wow. I have a whole other family somewhere that I have to try to figure out. But isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the men came here to work and some of them stayed here, you know. So when I went to Italy for the first time when I was 10, my grandmother spoke English. My great grandmother spoke English because she was in, in, in the United States for a few years when she was three, four, five years old. 
So it's amazing. Wow. That's amazing. So, and another thing too is um, my, and this is, I just found out within the last 10 years, my mother was not an American citizen when she came to this country and he had me. And I found out that I could get dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to really look into it because it could really help my kids, even my grandkids. Yeah. But, um, my brother, my younger brother, he does have dual citizenship. I and mean, he married a girl from Italy. So, you know, he could go back and forth not having any issues with staying there. So isn't that amazing? It is amazing. And it's funny that you mentioned this, but I don't know if you know this. Jessica, is, you know, well, you obviously know Jessica's marrying an Italian. Yeah, love Francesco, love him. But she's going to get to a citizenship. She's going to work that out after because Francesco has citizenship. So it's it's yeah. cool. You know, you look at all this. Yeah. And I know that it comes with, like you said, going back and forth is easier. There's a lot of like more perks and stuff that they can have. You know, it's cool. It's really cool. But Laura, what's one of the most favorite things you and I like to do? <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people do, but man, do we love our food? <laughs> yeah, we love our food. Manja, manja, manja. Exactly. You, eat. you can't go to an Italian's house, especially a grandma, which is called Nona. And you can't go to Nona's house without her bringing out the food. She keep asking you every five minutes, are you hungry? You want more to eat? You want more to eat? Can I tell you, can I tell you a quick thing about this? I don't know if you know this. This is kind of really bad. So I would work all day and I was dating Tony. I would go over to the, his parents' house. And of course, his parents, the first thing they want to do, are you hungry? Do you want to eat? You know, whatever. So I would say I ate, even though I didn't. So they'd give me a smaller portion because they'd want to give me, like, they want to fill my plate, like, whoa, like yeah. this. And I'm like, oh my God, if I do eat all this, yeah. I will be like that, you know? Yeah. So anyways, it's kind of That's, funny. I like laugh at yeah. that because. It's they a, they truly feel it's like you it's your way of showing love you right know? Exactly. it's your way of showing love exactly. yes exactly yeah. you know I had I was very fortunate I didn't really know my grandmother too much in Italy but my grandmother here she used to feed everybody yeah. for the holidays she didn't care who came to the house even if they didn't even fit in there that woman was cooking like you wouldn't believe and she just made sure everybody was fed. It was a feast. It was a feast every holiday. And we used to go there every Sunday. You know, I don't know if you know, but Italians usually have a tradition to have pasta on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. even have it on Wednesdays too mm -hmm. and stuff. But it's, it's, it's really a great thing. I know, Debbie, you are so fortunate that you cook for your in-laws and you're a wonderful cook. Thank and you. Uh, you are as well, Laura. We we're both blessed with cooking. We know how to do it. <laughs> you know, you go over by they come over by your house and you have a nice little feast every Sunday if you can. Mm -hmm. That is a tradition that you can't, that's a wonderful tradition. And that's what we're talking about. Right. Traditions and heritage, you know. Um, I think a lot of people especially if you're out more, like you're not like maybe third or fourth or fifth generation, right. you might not do a lot of the things that your heritage had done. And I suggest that you look into this more. You know, uh, I know a lot of people do the 23andMe or they do the, what's the other name of the other Ancestry.com too. Yeah. Or, well, well, well yeah. that's the DNA what, thing. Okay. What was yeah. the original DNA thing? Um I always think of 23 and me. I can't. I think it is though. I think you are right about that though. I think it was called that, something like that. Yeah. But you everybody knows what we're talking about, or who yeah, doesn't? Right, you can, right, yeah. right. Google and, it, Google it. Right. <laughs> and, we, and it's something stupid too that I can't even think of right now. But um a lot of people do it and it costs about a hundred dollars or so. And I haven't done it, but my son has done it and my um mom have done it, you know. And my son's father was adopted. So we wanted to see where he was from. And he was mainly Italian. But you know, with that, it was so amazing, Debbie. And I think I told you this, but I'm telling everybody here. He found a distant cousin that is looking for family. Oh, boy. And it was Fun. Just a story. She was left at a church pew when she was a baby. And these Italian people adopted her. 
Oh and my goodness. I see if I'm related to her somehow. I keep saying I'm going to go get one of those tests. But I know those tests they could do where they could do your DNA plus they could do like um your body issues, you know, yeah. you mm -hmm. your body and stuff. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's great. I love family and I get a little sad sometimes because uh, as we go on in our lives, it seems like the traditions and the heritage seem to go away from people. But that's what we were, that's what our family was, you know? Mm -hmm. I remember when I went to Italy once, the Italian people used to say, ah, oh, you Americans. You know, you, you know, you don't know your history. You don't, you know, you don't appreciate your history because they have it in front of them every day. You know, you have Roman rooms, you got the Colosseum, you got all the stuff there. Well, we don't necessarily have all that stuff here. You know, we have farmland, we got the city and all that stuff. And I understand what they're talking about because there's a richness Mm -hmm. about knowing your heritage right knowing where you come from right debbie oh i agree and i also want to bring something up and i think this also prompted our conversation we had like just about two weeks ago was well not even two weeks ago about some of the parts of our heritage that you guys people have that are very they're not a happy heritage memories and things that have happened years ago you know and so like there's different parts of the authenticities that people need to understand how hard it was for them to get where they went and how they got here and what they struggled to get through right. so that you can learn to appreciate that. You know, we, we have it so good at times that we don't have a clue on what they went through and how they had to, you know, when you look at the ancestry.com that we just spoke of, and you talked about your mom coming over on the boat, I had a client who actually showed me, she brought her, took her phone out and she was kind of helping me learn how to do that. And I, I feel guilty. I have not progressed into it and I need to, but she showed me how my grandparents came over on the boat and saw there was a document that had line what well, each name was under each name and I saw it and it was like holy cow this is so cool that they have all this that they've been able to get to a point where they can actually have the stuff available for people so for pennies on the dollar because you can get a free membership on some of these places for a month you get a lot done in a month and then you could decide if you want to keep it you really we're 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 um suggesting and trying to get you guys to think to dig in deeper so you can share it sibling wise or children wise or grandchildren wise you know yeah. so oh yeah well you think about the these relatives of us ours they fought to come to this country and what they how they lived and, and, and all that stuff and you know they came here with practically nothing with maybe a bag or whatever right you know and it's like and uh you know and they if you think about it they fought to come in this country and we are reaping the rewards from it right you know right. and if you don't if you don't have if you don't know your heritage and you don't can't find anything start new traditions mm -hmm. start books of your of who you are and who your family are who your kids are scrapbooking or whatever it is so important you know, because we don't think about it, but years, years ahead of us, right? our relatives ahead of us, you know, the, down the line, they're going to be wanting to be interested in who we are, you know? Exactly. And you know what? I don't know if you've got areas that you might have boxes of stuff that maybe from people that have passed, like maybe, you know, in your older parts of your family. And I know my mom's been gone for quite a while. And I would, you know, we look at certain things and we were looking at some of the wedding pictures that we had and, and some of the, they're all black and white and they're all cool. And, you know, it's, these are the things that you could spend. You literally could have a time to get everybody together and like, let's talk like, you know, heritage and do like a cool thing. You know, if you're doing a Sunday dinner or you're doing a time with your family and to, or try to do it more often, maybe it's at the holidays. That's a great time. Reminisce and stuff. I think that's really awesome. Oh yeah. And that's the whole part of the holiday is reminiscing and, and reminiscing about good things. Yeah. You can have like a heritage party at your house. Right. You know? right. And, um, you know, Yes, ask the kids and everybody to participate and and maybe they could find some facts and that. But you know, it's it's really important to, I think, for this younger generation 
to totally know where their heritage and the traditions of the family. There's so much going on in this world, you know, a lot of negative, but we got to keep close to our families that they know who we are and what our family stands for. I agree. You know? And that, so, but, you know, I know the kids are going back to school and I know they're going to be getting some kids. I don't know what grade they have the project where they got to do the family tree and all that stuff. But, you know, you can even do with your first and second graders too, you know, you oh, absolutely. Can, like do, do a, do a tree out of construction right. paper and have them look. And you know, what's neat about it is too, if the grandparents are still alive, have them call their grandparents and ask them questions about their heritage and what they did when they were a kid. It's just it's just amazing what they'll find out. I feel that the family gets closer when they all talk about something and they have something in common they can talk about. It's not video games. It's not, you know, it's their heritage. Mm -hmm. Right, Deb? I agree. It's I like, agree. It's like and gold. I have to tell you a funny side note. I know I've probably told you the story over and over, but, you know, we try to do little things where we have my mom's recipes and then we don't have my grandma's recipes on my dad's side. But one thing I got to tell you funny is that she used to hand out her recipe for kolachkis, which are kind of a Polish bohemian kind of cookie, obviously. It looks like a Danish, but it's smaller. Everybody probably knows what one is. She used to make fantastic kolachkis, but what she would do is she would, she was a stinker apparently, and she would leave out ingredients because she didn't want anybody to make it the way she did, which was kind of hilarious. But my daughter, Jessica, has really gotten the pecan testy um, recipe together that my mom did, where she make these little, like, little nut cups and stuff. But we have another recipe that we do from... The Italian side, which is sausage bread, and we, yeah. we, we we usually make like twelve loaves at a time. And my husband and Mariano have gotten this like thing where they like the whole counter is crazy, and you've got flour flying everywhere, and you got cheese and oil and all these things, and they roll it all up. And the way they do it, and I'm not going to give it away because it's crazy how it goes, but it's really really good. And we freeze it. We keep we keep some out and usually have it at Christmas time. Um, but these are the little fun things like you want to do, Lori. You're even just well, everyone knows your chocolate chip cookies are amazing, but just the tradition too about that. It always got me about those egg painting cookies when you did those, when we did that segment. Yeah. That might not be a ethnic mm. one, but it's a tradition now, tradition. okay, that she's done. And I did them again and I love them and they're so much fun and you could do it with anything. But these are the things that you're, you're getting your little ones, hopefully, engaged in you know and, and and for the men in the family maybe their tradition is oh, god only knows what it could be you know but it's maybe not in the kitchen maybe it is in the kitchen but there could be something you know they can read books to them they can talk about things they can tell the stories the old stories that they remember you know maybe they have to make it up a little bit who knows but just to, just to kind of have like you know, that time, it's special, you know, so. Yeah, it's special. I'm just going back to my chocolate chip cookies. Yesterday, a girl that I know that I gave her a recipe, her husband and I used to work together at Relios, and she asked me to get the recipe for his birthday. So she puts on Facebook yesterday a picture of her making the cookies. Oh. This is Mama Lori Caputo's recipe. And all these people were asking questions about it. And she says, oh, yeah, I bring them everywhere I go. And I just kind of it made my day. Yeah. Like, you know, that's a, like a tradition or whatever. The re My recipe that I came up with. And I was so down yesterday and it just brought me up so much. It was amazing. So, you know, people do. They want to know stuff. Do you remember when they used to have that Amish bread or whatever? Oh, you yeah. Yeah. That was another like a tradition. You had to. You had to. Send it like they sent you home with some of it and it had to like rise and then yeah. I, I don't remember the whole background. You know another thing too, Laura, is if and when possible, nowadays anybody could do it. Learn a different language. Learn your ethnic language. Do you know Mariano has been teaching himself at eight years old Italian? He sits with his little iPad and he plugs in words and phrases and then he, he goes to translate into another language, which he picks Italian, and then he says it. And I'm like, I should be doing this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, but, I mean, I, there's so many apps out there for that. You right. Know, to change things. Um, yeah, it's great. That's great. 
That in that little boy is so cute. He's not really little. He's, in, he's hilarious. But hilarious. He's just a little Italian guy. You know, he loves yeah. the Italian heritage, which is yeah. one. Yeah, he argues with me. He's like, yeah, I'm part Polish and Bohemian, but really, Mimi, I'm all Italian. I go, oh, dear. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to say, I don't care. I go, but he does get into the traditions of the other stuff. Yeah. Like, he does. I mean, he doesn't like, you know, but I don't know, Lord. We get we hit so much we talked about already. We're coming yeah. up on time some. I mean, anything else that you want to highlight? Like, oh, highlight for us. The two biggest events we know oh, of yeah. right to, for this weekend that are, we're torn. I don't even know which way we're going, what days or what, but Lord, tell us all about okay. it. Well, first of all, you remember when we, we interviewed Ron Onesti from uh, Arcada and he runs the big Italian fest down at Taylor Street? It's going on this weekend. It starts today. Um, go down there all they're going to have five different stages with different bands going all the time great fest he says it's safe to go down there there's great parking and everything but you could go on to his website and you would go and you could go www.oshows.com and then our other oh and the Bronx Wanderers are playing yes. Woo. Oh, uh, look at your schedules and see when they're coming. You got it. You, if you see them, say Lori and Debbie sent us. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Sunday, well, it's this weekend, but Sunday, our other band, Strung Out, the local band that we follow, is playing at an Italian fest in Crest Hill. And I think it's at 630, but mm -hmm. the fest is going on all weekend. And Crest Hill is, you know, near Joliet and that. So if anybody's in that area, stop. And we're not sure what which ones we're going to go to and stuff, you know. Like Debbie says, it's like we're sitting there thinking about, should we go here and there and there and here? But maybe if you see us, say hello. Yes, please do. Please. Talk to Strung Out. Say Lori and Debbie sent you. And um, and uh, so that's it that I know. But look, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm going to say one last tidbit. That in Milwaukee... Ooh. They have all the ethnic fests all summer long. And I'm telling you, Milwaukee fests are great. It's down in Milwaukee. It's by the lake, but it's, they have a Polish fest. They have a German fest. They have the Italian fest. They have all different kinds of fests. So check that out. So, may, may I mention in the winter, a lot of times they have Kris Kringle fest goes around and that's like a German thing too, that happens more yeah. in the winter time. So you guys, it's not all just the summer. For us here, we're you know we're more seasonal, but check all over the place. Just check your check it out. So, I don't have anything else to say. Dan. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good too. <laughs> I can't wait to see you this weekend. And well, sounds good. Yeah. So, with that, we are friends helping friends, and I am Lori, and I'm Debbie, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Sounds great. Thanks, bye -bye. guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. bye.